Ladies and gentlemen, hey, hi, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. It is once again the best day of the week if you're a Call of Duty player or somewhat dehydrated. It is Thirsty Thursday and coinciding with that, it is also update day here in Warzone and Vanguard. It's also the first Thirsty Thursday and the first update day of the new year for each game. And this is one that we didn't really know too much about. Going into both titles today, Warzone and Vanguard, we didn't really have any idea of what would be uh, changing because we didn't really get any previews. But lo and behold, we do have some new patch notes to go over for Warzone, albeit not a ton, but some. Uh, we also have a new playlist update. We've got some new stuff going on on the Trello board for each game. So quite a bit to go over here today as we go through it all. If you enjoy the video at any point, let me know by dropping a like on it. it would be seriously appreciated. And of course, if you're new to the channel or if you're part of the nearly 56% of viewers who are not already subscribed, every single day I got you covered with everything going on in COD. News, updates, loadouts, tips, it is all right here. So feel free to subscribe and turn on those post notifications. So let's start first with the various patch notes that we've got between Warzone and then also all the Trello board updates for Warzone and for Vanguard. Then we'll make our way into what was actually changed today with the playlist updates and whatnot. But uh, yesterday afternoon, actually, Raven ended up finally tweeting out something after the new year and after the holiday break. It was a couple of days of radio silence despite them being back in office. But we did get a small update for yesterday, January 5th. And within these patch notes, they say in Vanguard modes, the fire sale public event will now last for the entire duration of the respective circle that it starts with. Now, this is one that I'm a little bit confused about because if you remember prior to the holiday break, they made an update for Vanguard modes where the fire sale event would only last for about a minute and a half and not the entire circle because when it lasts for the entire circle, everyone spams UAVs, everyone gets a self revive. It's just a little bit overwhelming because there's just every single fight has clusters or UAVs. It's just not all that natural. So they went ahead, they nerfed it, but they didn't actually nerf it. The fire sale event said it ended like after a minute and a half of starting, but it actually went for the full circle still. Now they've just made it so that it truly does last the full circle and the UI won't go away. So they actually didn't make a change with this one as far as I understand. Like I said, kind of confused with that one. And then as far as the bug fixes go, they fixed collision issues with various elements across Caldera, so different exploit areas, different glitches and stuff like that. That's no, uh, you know, big surprise that happens in every single patch, it seems like. They also fixed an issue causing every loadout drop to spawn at the exact same XY coordinates, so this should add in some variety with that. And then most importantly with this update, they fixed an issue causing the Awoken Francis Operator skin, aka the Tier 100 skin, to appear invisible beyond a certain distance. This was a massive issue for the past couple of days. Everyone's been running around with this Tier 100 skin, and past 30 meters, you were just ahead, so it's insanely hard to spot you, insanely hard to actually kill players who are using that skin past those distances. So while this update is, I won't lie, a little underwhelming for the first update of the year after so long of not having an update, at least it did fix a major gameplay issue with that tier 100 skin. On top of that, coinciding with these patch notes going live, Raven actually mentioned in the tweet that had the link to these patch notes saying, uh, we're excited to be back to work. Here's the first of many updates we're working towards over the coming weeks. Look for more updates soon and keep the feedback coming. So they're just confirming, yes, they're fully back. We're going to see frequent updates starting right now and into the coming weeks. So hopefully we're discussing quite a few uh, impactful patch notes in the coming days. But speaking of all these changes that they are looking at and working on, let's head over to the Warzone Trello board here momentarily because while this really hasn't seen too many updates, there are quite a few things that should be fixed now that they are fully back in office uh, and things that have honestly been on this Trello board for quite some time. We're talking the basically unplayable versions of console. Both Xbox and PlayStation have so many stability and performance issues right now. The demon glitch is still very apparent. Their textures don't render in. That is all being investigated as of right now. They're also looking into the whole gold flake error on Xbox where you basically can't play the game unless you have Xbox Live Gold. And the newest update to the Trello board is actually the whole uh, buy station freezing glitch where if you open up a buy station, your game freezes for like five seconds. By far one of the most annoying things to run into right now in game. It is super obnoxious, very annoying, game breaking in quite a few senses. Every time it seems like I'm in a, uh, you know, a stressful situation where I need to buy a teammate back or I need to get a UAV and there's a team 50 meters away, I'm freezing for, you know, five seconds. Not fun. They are investigating that as well. So those are some things that should be getting fixed here in the very near future. All right, so post edit Zach here. Hey, hi, how you doing once again? Right after I recorded all this saying they really hadn't updated the Trello all that much, they went ahead and updated the Trello quite a bit. So we have now a handful of new issues they're also investigating. So hopefully we're gonna see these fixed here in the near future. Uh, first up, 
voice chat. Players are unable to switch their voice chat device or microphone from the default system device, so that'll be updated at some point here. Uh, for the throwing knife, if you use any kind of throwing knife blueprint, so the flaming throwing knife, the lightning one, whatever it may be, you actually can come back with your first weapon in your loadout sometimes, so that's a glitch. They're aware of that, and that'll be patched here as well. Uh, for weapon models, players may observe that some of the Vanguard weapons are missing pieces of their model with certain attachments equipped, so just glitches going on with the integration weapons there. Uh, debug text. Players will notice various debug text elements in-game. Those are not supposed to be there, so those will be removed at some point here. And then the newest one, uh, players are unable to invert mouse look for keyboard and mouse on consoles. I'm not gonna lie, I don't know many people that actually play with keyboard and mouse on a console, but if you do, you're able to invert your, uh, your look there, and that'll be updated here soon too. As now they are fully back in office, we should also see quite a bit of weapon tuning, I'd imagine, here pretty soon. Unfortunately, we still have the issue of all the uh, QA testers. Basically, I think it's 99 QA testers, including some from Raven, uh, being on strike right now. They're not working right now because back prior to the holidays, Activision went in and fired a handful of Raven employees for no reason. Despite promising them, you know, more job security and better pay, they ended up letting them go, which is just absolute crap. And they haven't done anything about that. Raven has said, hey, or I should say the QA uh, people have been striking saying, hey, this isn't right. This needs to get fixed. We need to come to an agreement here. We're not working. And Activision has yet to respond, unfortunately. If anything changes there, I'll be sure to keep you guys updated. But that could pose an issue uh, when it comes to fixing some glitches and some issues in a quicker amount of time just because they don't have the QA staff that they normally have. Anyway, of course, because it's Thursday, we do also have a playlist update live in Warzone today as well. And for the next week, looks like we're going to have Vanguard Royale solos, duos, and trios. No quads for this. Instead, we're going to have Vanguard Resurgence quads. Honestly, not going to lie, not a big fan of that one. Uh, we also have standard Battle Royale quads and quads alone. No solos, duos, or trios for that. We also have Plunder duos and then also Rebirth Resurgence trios. Not gonna lie, not really a huge fan of this playlist update. Seems like they're kind of limiting things to just weird numbers. Now, jumping over to Vanguard, before we look at the whole playlist update here, we do have the Vanguard Trello, which also received a couple of updates recently. It's been a couple weeks, really, since they last updated this, but uh, over the past couple of days or so, they have gone in and added some new issues that they are currently investigating. So these are some things that are going to get fixed here, ideally around the mid-season update, which I imagine will probably be next week, since obviously we didn't see it happen this week. Uh, here we've got quick play filters, occasionally ignoring the player's preferred intensity. So sometimes you'll queue for blitz, but you'll get assaults. So they are looking into that. Uh, the cold-blooded perk does not protect you against dogs. That should be fixed, and you should be able to not be recognized by the dogs if you are running cold-blooded. They're still looking into the mastery card issue where it doesn't unlock for players who completed all the challenges. Uh, aim assist toggling off when you run into a player who's using cold-blooded. They also added a new issue when some players hit prestige master and have custom mods. They can't actually edit their classes. It's kind of a niche one, but it's an issue nonetheless. They're still looking into packet burst causing a bunch of hitching during gameplay. Uh, the scoreboard is sometimes missing from the match summary. They're looking into that. Uh, some players are experiencing limited map rotation and quick play, so they're basically just going to add in more diversity to the map pool and the map rotation there, and they are still working on camo issues as well. Then to close things out, we of course also saw a brand new playlist update go live in Vanguard Multiplayer, and this week we're looking at Pacific Party. We've got Tiny Tactical, we've got Ship House 24-7 back yet again. Great news that we have Shipman and DOS House now. If you're going for camo challenges, that's probably the playlist to be in. We also have the Carnage Mosh Pit, that we have Champion Hill trios and duos in there as well. So yeah, with all that being said, that is effectively everything that ended up changing in the first update of 2022. That's going to wrap things up for today. If you enjoyed the video, let me know by dropping a like on it. it would be seriously appreciated. And of course, if you're new to the channel or if you have not already subscribed, this is the best place to be for all things going on in COD, whether it is news, updates, loadouts, tips. I got it all right here every single day. So feel free to subscribe with your notifications turned on. As always, if you want to check out any of my partners, be sure to use code IMMORTAL for a discount on all SCUF, G Fuel, Gamer Advantage, and Control Freak products. The links for all those can be found down in the description below. But once again, thank you so much for tuning in, and until next time, take it easy, have an awesome rest of your day, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.